Welcome everyone to the Project Explorer session. My name is Sean Herring and I'll be presenting and exploring with you today a new add-on in Civil 3D called Project Explorer. A little bit about me first. I've spent the past 15 years or so in the civil engineering and construction space in land development, uh, hydrology and hydraulics, and transportation. I've also trained and implemented and spoke about Autodesk solutions all over the world. Uh, you can read some of the boring stuff there on the right side about me on the professional side, but a little bit about me on the personal side. I'm a huge sports fan, um, clearly, as you can tell, a uh, Denver Bronco fan. So uh, this year is not good to us, but uh, we it's 2020, so what do you expect? I like to do anything outdoors, off-roading, four-wheeling, four -wheeling, hunting, fishing. My family didn't want me to put a picture of them up. I've got a wife and a child, and then I've got a dog there that uh, pretty much runs the house. So that's just a little bit about me personally. A little bit about this session. Uh, we're going to go over Project Explore, and we're going to do exactly what the title says, Project Explore. We're going to explore this. Uh, it's really one of those products where you get into it, and you just look around, and you pick and you click. Uh, so we're going to do several different things and, and as we explore this product over the next 40-45 uh, minutes. Quick overview of the agenda. We're going to take this in order of what we see here. So the first part we're going to review and kind of understand what the capabilities of Project Explorer are. We're going to look at the user interface and just kind of dive in real quick to uh, how it looks, how it feels. We're then going to look at several situations. We're going to use a pipe design and a corridor design to um, modify, make changes, look at some edits um, inside our civil 3D model. We'll quickly look at uh, the very simple ways to validate your design. There's quick checks that are happening as you go. Uh, we'll quickly take a look at where those are and then what you can do about them. And then we'll wrap it up with reporting and sharing that data. So you can export out to 2D DWGs, you can export out to PDFs, Excels, um, everything's fully customizable. So that's going to be our agenda. We'll jump into a series of, of slides and videos. Um, we'll have some questions and answers. We'll talk about that at the end. And then we'll take a quick look at the, the handout as well that comes along with this class. So in this first portion, we will review and explore some of the capabilities and the user interface of Project Explorer. So what is Project Explorer? Uh, Project Explorer provides users with a very easy to use all in one place model review tool. So it's going to be an external window to Civil 3D, as we'll see here in a moment. Uh, but it simplifies the way you navigate through the project, simplifies the way you review and simplifies the way that you model the majority of entities in Civil 3D. So how is it used? Uh, typically the, the management part of your project and your drawing objects is done in the tool space in your prospector tab. Um, now you can edit Civil 3D designs in this tab series of lists. So all your assemblies, corridors, point groups, surfaces, alignments, profiles, so forth. Everything's all in one place, similar to the prospector, but easy to jump between entity to entity. And then you can easily validate your design. So at all times, it's running this validation tool that, uh, in this example, shown that, that will read the pipe length. You know, if you have a rule in your pipe network that's uh, structures can't be more than 400 feet apart, it's going to see that type of stuff and it's going to warn you and it's going to tell you how often and how much it's violated by. And then it has automated spreadsheets um, that we'll also review. And this is a very simple add-on to Civil 3D. So it's found on the Add-ins tab, and you just select the button, the Launch Project Explorer button. Okay, so we'll jump into the software. At first, I want to take a look at the user interface. So the layout is handled through um, a window that you can easily set up and save your settings. Uh, two different locations, the, the interface layout and the interface preferences. So let's first jump into the interface layout. We'll, we'll launch Project Explorer and we'll review a few things first. So I'm now here inside Civil 3D. Uh, I'm inside 2020. It also works in 2021 with the correct updates and licensing and so forth. 
Uh, I've opened up one of the files that I've used as a data set that I've included in the, the handout and the downloads and everything. Uh, however, you can open up any of your files. They just have to contain civil 3D objects. Uh, so up here on the add-ins tab, we can just simply launch Project Explorer. And that's going to pull up the Project Explorer window. Uh, you can see that you can go back and forth between the two, so I can continue to work in in Civil 3D and AutoCAD um, and do some work while still going back and forth between Project Explorer. So it's not like a lot of the properties in Civil 3D where you open up a surface property, for example, you have to make your changes, edits, or whatever, and apply and OK them in order to get back to the Civil 3D model. Here, you've got this floating window. You can dock on that second monitor. Um, this user interface, it, it might look like there's quite a bit going on. There is, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, across the top, we have all the tabs, alignments, assemblies. Uh, you can see the numbers next to alignments, assemblies, and so forth. And um, what those are are just telling you the amount of entities in this file. I have no point groups in this file, so it's blank. Uh, but you've got corridors, point groups, all your surfaces listed here, volume surfaces, 10 surfaces, feature lines, uh, parcels. There's no parcels in this file as well. Uh, pipe networks that we'll get into that a little bit more, but you can see uh, this one has one pipe network and everything about that pipe network. So you have your information across the top. Um, you also have some different view modes here. So in a pipe network, for example, you can say, show me between manhole one and manhole three, compare it to the uh, existing ground. And it's gonna show the existing ground in there. Um, we also have the vertical exaggeration. So if you wanna see this uh, exaggerated differently, you can make a change there. And then you'll see all the information here. So we'll get into that as we uh, delve more into some of these properties and some of the workflows here. But what I want to first look at is going to be the preferences and the layouts down here on the bottom left of this tab. Okay, so we've got preferences, we have layout. Let's do the layout first. So let's go in here to user interface layout. And this is um, your settings, your CUI, your options, um, if you will, uh, on corridors, on point groups, um, everything about that model itself. Uh, for example, let's look at the alignments. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you have when it comes to alignments. Uh, there's this little drop down here that says set column layout for alignments profiles, set column layout for alignment PI, set for PVIs for the profiles and so forth. Each one of those things have a different column here, different properties that you can display at all times. So you can see that can get pretty over overwhelming. And so you just change and, you know, maybe I don't want asymmetric lengths turned on and off. Um, that type of stuff you can just simply turn off. Okay. Same with assemblies. You know, what do you want to see for assemblies, sub-assemblies, corridor regions? Um, you know, maybe I don't want to see the uh, corridor name. I don't care, but I, I want the baseline name, starting, ending station. Same thing with corridors. Different options for corridors, point groups, surfaces. Uh, pipe networks, you know, what information do you want to see for your pipes? As you can see, pipes have a lot of information. A lot of that stuff is not necessarily important through your day-to-day -day design. And then sample line groups, blocks. And then there's also the general to the far right. The general is to display your, um, your decimals, your display options, bearing options, um, how you want numbers formatted as you start to output and review data. Okay, so you can make all those changes. Um, what's nice about this, just like a CUI, you can save this. So you can save that layout style and you can name it uh, whatever you want. Um, I'm just gonna call that Sean. That way I always have that style saved so I can import this in. Maybe it's a company standard, maybe it's just a personal preference and you're going version to version 2021, 2022. Um, those are you can save because that is a little bit of time to set up. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple. It would take a few minutes though to go through each individual one and see what type of information you really want to display. Okay, in the second part, we will review the interface preferences. So we'll go to the same location that we went to 
um, in, for the layout options and we will do the preferences. So let's jump into a quick demo on the preferences. Okay, so I'm back here inside Civil. Uh, just briefly, we went over the layout options. This time we're gonna look at the preferences. So to the far left of the Project Explorer, we've got preferences. And in here, this again is more or less your, your CUI, how you want things to show, display, um, what you want labeled. So on the general here, you can see that uh, maybe my font right now, I've got it purple, maybe I want it yellow. Very simple to make those changes. Um, user interface categories, so maybe I don't really deal with parcels much, I don't really want to see them up at the top. I can turn off parcels. And then I can make sure that I set these display options for each individual entity. So profile views, how do you want to see the background color, uh, compared object color, so like your existing ground, finished ground, maybe you want that red. Typical vertical exaggeration, maybe we want to be one to five. And then your grid intervals, uh, maybe you want to see more or less, so I can say 10 in the Z and 50 in the X, for example. And again, through each one, you've got feature line views, how you want those displayed. Assemblies, how you want those displayed. We're gonna spend quite a bit of time on assemblies um, coming up soon. Corridor view, pipe networks, section view, and then your reports and tables. Um, you can custom save these. We're gonna do a, a demo on creating a, a custom table and export that out. Uh, you can see here that uh, you can save those um, default styles and default reports uh, as part of this preferences file as well. Okay, and then just like we did with the layouts, you can save this as your own preference style uh, to upload that or bring that in as you go on or share with others. So the user interface itself may seem a little bit overwhelming. As we work through this, it's not too bad. It'll be pretty simple, but there is a lot of different sections in here to go through um, and we'll explore each one of those as we go. So it's just a quick re review of the user interface. Now let's jump into the next section. So in this session we're going to focus on the design and modification of our Civil 3D file. As we saw before in the interface and settings portion, all the information is displayed within the Project Explorer window. It's live geometric data. Uh, therefore, if something's modified in the Civil 3D model or in the Project Explorer model, your updates are done automatically. So we're going to take this in a couple different sections. This is where we're going to kind of do a more detailed walkthrough on, on some of the capabilities of Project Explorer, some of the ones that I use often. Uh, the first one, we're going to look at alignments, profile sections. We'll do assemblies and corridors. And then we'll do pipe networks, and we may briefly touch base on point groups, surfaces, and parcels. So for alignments, profiles, and sections, uh, being able to see them all in one spot, again, we can see that in the prospector. Here we can see it all in one without having to go into certain properties and, and review and edit and hit OK, review, edit, hit OK. Um, here we'll start with viewing the alignments, profiles, and sections uh, in the Project Explorer window. So let's review some of the stuff when it comes to alignments and profiles here in Civil. So I've got that same file open, just the design base that comes along with the, uh, the data set, or again, use your file either way. I'm on the Alignments tab. As you can see, I've got nine alignments. Uh, you can turn on and off some stuff here, so you can turn on the curb return profiles, offset profiles, and so forth. Uh, what I want to do here says compare to. Maybe I want to compare this to... Uh, either another alignment and profile, or I want to compare this to a surface. So I'm going to choose my existing ground surface. You can see that that existing ground surface showed up there in that green dash line. Okay, we're going to leave the uh, vertical exaggeration as it is. You can turn off stuff here, so just more interface things that you can play around with. Uh, but what you can see here is now I can see all nine alignments that are in this drawing. All in one place, I can select, look at every single one of them. You can see the color difference here. So based on my preferences, I have purple, which means it's an editable uh, dialog. So, for example, I can edit the profile name, the object style, the design check, and all that. So anything you can see in purple, you can double-click 
and make that change. So in this case, it was just a style change. Again, any change I make here, I'm changing it in Civil. So I'm just going to focus on Project Explorer. Uh, but you can see here we've got uh, our alignments and then each profile that's underneath that alignment. And as I choose individual profiles, you can see that shading change as I go. So for example, let's look at uh, Coachman Lane and I'll look at the finish grade for Coachman. Down here in the bottom, I can see everything about the profile and the alignment itself. So if I go back to the alignment, you can see here I have calculated stations. If I scroll over here to the right, it's going to show me, here's my compared surface that I set up at the top, existing ground, and my compared elevation here. So you can see my compared elevation versus my true elevation. Um, for, you know, if you want to see a quick cut and fill at a certain station. Um, this is every 10 feet here, as you can see my, my line up at the top's going every 10 feet. If I want to see the data, just say every 50 feet. I can just change that interval there. And now I have every 50 feet, I can see that information for my alignment and profile. Okay, so again, I can double click to, to change anything that's purple. I can go to my existing ground profiles, my finished ground profiles. Again, information there, you can scroll across, compared elevation, compared offsets, compared slopes. Um, all the information you could ever possibly have here, you can see. So if I'm building my report, we'll talk about reports later, this is the type of information you can get in your report. So we're not going to be able to edit entities here, but you can view all the data about that entity itself. So again, alignments, profiles there. Um, I can also create from Project Explorer. So I can either choose to use the civil options or up here at the top left, I can continue to, to create. So I can do my design stuff from here. Um, or again, through Civil 3D, whichever way. It's going to get you to the same tools. So if I go to Create Alignment Creation Tools, same dialog box, that's that Civil 3D dialog box. Okay. So some stuff there on the alignments, mostly just view and analyze and report. So again, alignments, profiles, information there in the screen. Okay, so after we've reviewed the alignments, profiles, and sections, we're going to jump now into the assemblies and corridors. As you know, there's a massive amount of data within your assemblies, and even more so once you start to build your corridor model uh, with all baselines, especially kind of more advanced projects, uh, larger projects. Uh, Project Explorer streamlines this, so if you've ever used a section editor, for example, in Civil 3D, it kind of takes some parts of that in a way, but uh, makes it a lot easier to provide insight and to make changes to assemblies or your corridor. So let's jump over to Civil and let's take a look at the assemblies and corridor functionality within Project Explorer. So we'll now look at the assemblies and corridor. So I'm going to choose my assembly here, my corridor here. You've got the two tabs at the top. I'll start out with the assemblies. So I'm on this assemblies tab. I can choose which ones to show. I'm just going to leave a show all, but you can see the different options there for which ones to show if they're being used, referenced or not. I'll just do show all assemblies. And it's going to show my assembly. You can see the assembly there. I've got my curb return ones. I have my typical one that's just my full width road. I have others. Maybe I have a different uh, layout and so forth. So I've got six or seven assemblies there. And again, the purple text here is stuff that I can change. So I can change all the styles, names, descriptions, so forth. But here at the bottom, you can see where I've got my sub-assemblies and then where they're associated in the, the corridor. So if I have a hard time finding, you know, where is this assembly being used, I can quickly come down here and see that it's being used in two places, handcart lane and it's those two stations right there. So it's telling me what baselines and what regions that this assembly is being used. Under the sub-assemblies tab, again, we can change the name. You can see here as it highlights above, and let me just zoom in a little bit. As it highlights above, you can see which one you are working on. So left side and so forth, it's gonna highlight as green. And as I choose that, so let's make a couple changes here to my assembly. As I choose that, if I come in here to the right side, let's change the lane super elevation. And over here to the right, 
I can change any of those parameters. So again, purple text, I can change. So I'll make a simple change here for the width. Maybe this width has now changed to 19.5 instead of 14.5. I'm going to hit OK. As it makes that change, it's rebuilding my corridor inside Civil 3D. Okay. So we immediately have the updated assembly. We immediately have the updated corridor. I'll make a change on the left just to have that consistent. So I'm going to choose my left side and I'm going to choose my width, double click and change my text and go 19.5. Okay, so very simple changes. And again, I can change that for any part of this assembly and modify those subassembly properties. Okay, so pretty slick, pretty easy. I don't have to go into um, a bunch of them at a time, different ones. I can just grab them here, make those changes. That's on the Assemblies tab. On the Corridors tab, here we can tell it what, um, what corridor we have and then what baseline within that corridor we have. So there's my handcart lane with that new width that I made. You can see all the individual regions in here. So you can see in that region I used a different cross section missing the curb and gutter on the right side. So I can jump to and from the individual baselines, the individual uh, regions. I can modify the station. I can swap out the assemblies. I can do a lot of stuff right here just in this Project Explorer dialog box. So this is something, again, simple to explore yourself, but you can see the type of edits and the type of data that you have for both assemblies and corridors. So for this next portion of the demo, we're going to look at pipe networks. There's some great tools in here, tools I wish Civil 3D has had for a long time. Uh, so stuff as simply as you know, grabbing one manhole and grabbing 10 manholes down the line and saying, grade this at 1%, grade this at half a percent. Couldn't do that before. Um, gravity pipe, swapping multiple parts at one time, and making those global changes that you've always wanted to, but never had the op option of doing that. So let's jump into Pipe Networks and see some of the exciting tools in Project Explorer. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to the Pipe Networks tab. Pipe Networks, I feel like there's a lot more valuable information, some better stuff that you can do in Project Explorer, so I want to spend a little bit more time on that. So in this file, same file here, the design base, We've got one network. We've got our sewer network that I can select from down here. You can see down here in the bottom, I've got my structures. I've got my pipes. I've got pipe runs, which would be different uh, portions of that pipe network. So it may be different alignments, so forth. You can see a lot of violations going on there. It's okay for now. Um, but you can cycle between your structures, pipes, and your pipe runs pretty quick. And then again, the purple here is what we can change. So if we need to change the northing and easting of a manhole, maybe it's an existing manhole we change, we can just simply double click and make that value change. But what I want to do here is I want to make sure it's referencing the right surface. So maybe you've put this in before you had a surface. A lot of people do that. Um, you don't want to go one by one and reference a surface. What you can do here is select a series of pipes. So I'm just going to select from manhole 3 all the way down through manhole 25 and I can right click anywhere here in the blue and I get a bunch of different options here I got swap parts, set descriptions, styles so I can make these global changes what I want to do here is say set reference surface I can change that out so I'm just gonna leave it on existing ground but as you can see I can swap that surface out globally and I can hit OK I can do that for the structures and I can also do that for the pipes. So if I want to do the same thing, I'll select them, right click, set the reference surface and just make sure it's all set to the overall finished ground. So what about editing the pipe run? You know, maybe I want to make some changes here in this pipe network that's going to allow me to hold one manhole and grade all the way to another manhole at a constant slope. I can't do that currently. So what I'm going to do here is edit the pipe run. So I want to start here with manhole number 16. And I'm going to go to 6. So right now I've got you know 1.65 to 0.97. So a little bit grade difference there. Maybe I want that to be one certain slope. 
So once I've selected the pipes and the, the run that I want to edit, I'm going to choose Edit Pipe Run. And here I've got several parameters. Okay, I can choose to hold the start, hold the end. It's telling me what my end is, told, telling me what my start is. So maybe I want to, to hold the end in this case. So I want to hold my low point. Maybe it's existing, maybe it's a known um, elevation or something. Um, so I'm going to hold the end. I can set or hold the elevations by crown, center line, or invert. I'm going to choose invert. It's telling me all the information that I currently have in my existing system. So it's on average 1.3% from bottom to the top. And then down here, I can also choose to maybe have a step up or down through a manhole. So in this case, I want a one-tenth drop through a manhole. So I'm just going to type in 0.1. And then here for the slope, what do I want to hold? Let's just hold 1%. So I'm just going to change that to 1. And when I select OK, you can see there that it's modified that pipe run, and it's going from the low spot up to my other manhole at a 1%. So very simple changes I can make there that uh, may make it easier than going in one at a time through Civil 3D in the prospector or selecting pipe structure, pipe structure, and doing your design. So a lot of cool stuff there when it comes to pipe networks. Uh, you can take a look at the structures, pipes, pipe runs. You can do a little bit more exploration yourself. And in this session, we're going to quickly look at validating your design using Project Explorer. Very simple process. There's really nothing you need to do. It's just some overview. So there's dynamic violation reporting. It's a constant reporting. You switch to whatever it is, alignments, pipes, surfaces. You'll always see a warning symbol or some sort of validation. Um, there's alignments and profiles, there's pipe networks. Those two have the majority of the warnings, but there's also assemblies, corridors, point groups, uh, surfaces, sample lines, blocks, object sets, and reports that also have warnings. Uh, just due to the extensive list of it, which I've got in the documentation, we're just going to take a quick look at the alignments and the profiles, as well as the pipe networks. So as you can see there that on both of those alignments, profiles, and pipe networks, there's quite a bit. So um, if you wanted to report constantly on pipe cover or pipe slope, but not only does it report on that you have an error, as you can see there in the screenshots, it says maximum pipe length of 400 feet is violated by 0.384 feet. So you know what to fix, you know how to fix it, and if it's close, if it, you know, if it's a great exaggeration, you know, maybe 440 feet or something. Um, you can make some of those changes, but uh, these are constantly running in the background no matter what you're doing. So we'll take a quick look at them, just take a couple minutes to, to look at some of the warning symbols that we'll get in Project Explorer. Okay, so I've jumped over to Civil 3D, very simple. Um, along the top again, the alignments, assemblies, all that. As we go to alignments, I'm just going to scroll down. You know, most of these look good. But as I get down here to this one, Rickshaw Lane, for example, I can hover over that and it's going to tell me. In this case, the warning is profile end station falls beyond the station range of the associated alignment. As you guys know, if your profile falls short or goes long of the, the alignment, sometimes you get some errors in your corridor, your surfaces. Uh, so a, a quick check of just scrolling down here will let you know if there's a warning. It's a pretty simple one. Um, assemblies, got no warnings here on these, but uh, they'll show up here. And the, the sub-assemblies, where they're used, where they're not used. The other one that we'll look at, we're not going to go through all these, but I'm just going to quickly switch over here to pipe networks. You select your pipe network and whether you want to take a look at the structure. So you can see here on this one, I'm just going to scroll over it and hover. My maximum pipe drop has been violated. I mean, maybe I've got a broken model or something. I've messed something up. Under my pipes, again, I can scroll here. That's the one that says maximum pipe length, maximum pipe cover, maximum pipe cover. Uh, so again, quickly inspecting your model. Um, you know, maybe you're not trying to search out in there or something, but you're just doing a quick inspection just to make sure that uh, there's no problems. You can quickly run through those, and they're active all the time. So at any point, any time throughout your process, you can just switch to a a tab and and take a look and see so those design validations are great they're just on the fly 
always updating, reading your rules, reading your design and check sets, all that type of stuff. All right, in this last session, we're gonna look at reporting and sharing our data. So as you know, in Civil 3D, there's just a ton of information. And as you also know that within Civil 3D, there's a lot of reporting methods. Uh, you can create tables, you can export reports out. Uh, but Project Explorer has its own built-in customizable uh, reports. Uh, you can create reports, you can do tables. Uh, you can do quick reports. You can set up object sets, which we'll do here in a moment. We'll set up a set, so it's gonna re report on multiple things, maybe comparing an al alignment to a pipe, for example. Um, so those are all customizable and saveable. And then also other uh, ways of sharing that data is you can quickly export out to a 2D DWG that just exports out the civil 3D entities, but it will get like your pipe network, surfaces, so forth, out to a 2D AutoCAD drawing. Uh, pretty simple. Um, We'll go ahead and we'll start with doing the object sets. Um, those are important, so you can. there's an object sets tab in the main Project Explorer. And it's really useful when you're automating um, generation of one or more reports. So you can set up a whole bunch of object sets, a whole bunch of reports, and run actions at the same time, multiple actions at the same time. So if you don't have to go one at a time and spit out a report for a parcel, spit out a report for a pipe, uh, you can set this up in the Project Explorer Object Sets tab, and you can export that out pretty easily. And then for the reports, we can report based on the object set, or we can do a quick report. Um, just depends on how much control uh, you want, which you have control over both, but just depends on what you want in those reports. So uh, we'll take a look at both of those. And just as an FYI, uh, something I just briefly mentioned, is you can generate the AutoCAD drawings. So just a quickly 2D export function in, in Project Explorer. Um, and then you can generate tables. So if you want some really detailed, customizable tables, uh, you can generate the AutoCAD tables. We'll do a quick table, uh, but very simple to do. So let's jump over to Civil 3D and let's do this last part. All right, so back in Civil, where we're gonna take a look at the object sets first. So the far right tab in Project Explorer is object sets. To create that set, I'm just going to come here to the left side where it says New Object Set. So this will bring up the Object Set dialog box. Uh, we can name it. I'm just going to leave a default. I'm going to go down here on the left side first and run through these options. Um, object Set Action. You know, what's this going to do when we run the selected action? This is going to spit a report out. In our case, we're going to choose Report to DocX. So it's going to spit out a, uh, a Word doc. Down here, we've got the layout style. So here it says use layout of Project Explorer window. I'm gonna say use a specific layout style. So maybe I wanna specify what is in this report, this layout, and I'm gonna choose edit style here. And from this list, I have a ton of information. So I can start uh, saying, you know, for alignments, maybe I don't really care what the object style is. Uh, what the type of alignment is, or what site it belongs to. Maybe I just want like the alignment name, starting station, lengths, entities. Uh, maybe I'll turn off elevation stuff. We don't need that. We can also give it information about all the entities for the alignment, all the profile entities and so forth. All that stuff that we can build and create this report style, this layout for. So we've got the alignment, um, then you have all your objects here. I'm gonna come over to pipes. And let's do the column for the structures. You know, again, maybe I don't need structure description, style. Maybe I just want the rim elevation. And surface elevation. So, you know, we can turn off a few of these things here because that is a lot of information that's gonna be included in this report. And you don't need a lot of that information. So very simple to setting up the initial user interface stuff. It's just what do we want to see within this report, within this action that we're going to perform. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. You can, you can save this as a layout style. So if you have a company style standard, you can just hit save there. File output options. So down here, just the report style itself. So what's going to be included? in the report is gonna be the layout 
Uh, what's it look like is going to be this style. So I'm going to say use specific report style and I'm also going to go to edit style here. So this is just the look and feel of it. So, you know, letter size, maybe I want to go to A4. Orientation. Uh, we got the page options. We've got the font options. Maybe I want a different font here. Let's find a Roman T or something like that. Size, maybe we want it to be 12. I don't know. You've got table options on how you want your the body of your table to look. So all your rows and columns. Report header. What do you want included in that report header? And the report footer. So all this stuff that you can set up and you can save. And you hit just hit OK. So I'm going to hit OK here. And it creates this object set. But there's no objects in that object set yet. So now I'm going to start to populate this object set. We can select our object set here, and you can have multiple object sets. You can also right click here, and you can copy that. So maybe you have a similar report, you don't want to reset it all up. You can make a copy of that object set. But with that object set selected, I'm going to start to populate that with some information. So down here under objects, you can see I have zero. I'm going to hit the plus sign here to start adding or removing objects to that object set. So I'm going to hit the plus sign real quick. And then this is all the objects I can add to that object set. You can see all the stuff across the top, very similar to the Project Explorer window. I'm just going to select this from a list. So I'm going to go to Corridors. I'm going to choose my corridor. I'm going to add that whole corridor in, knowing that it has multiple baselines. But we can make some changes here in a moment. Okay, so I'm going to select OK. And you can see here we've got all of our baselines here. You know, maybe I don't want some of these. I can remove some of the baseline information. These could be curb returns. They could be just, you know, nothing that's important to this uh, exportable report here. And then let's say maybe we want to identify a few things um, to include along with this. So what we can do is we can start to filter this data. So maybe in this report, I want to spit out just information for my back of curb. And maybe I want information for my crown. Okay, so again, I can select multiple things in here. I did edge travel way as well. And so in this report, it's going to just include those codes specific to this corridor. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Okay, I'm going to continue on. I'm going to add more information. I could do that through this add remove objects. I'm going to do this a little bit different. I'm going to come here to the pipe networks tab uh, here in Project Explorer. And then I'm going to select my pipe network. And then down here on the bottom, we, we've looked at structures, we've looked at pipes, but there's this pipe run option, this tab here. Then I'm going to right click here on the, the pipe network name, and you can see here I now have add to object set, which is this pipe run that I just created. I'm just going to add it to my object set one. That's added it to it. We're going to hit OK. Now back to this object set, I've now added to this object set one, the baselines for that corridor, and my sewer pipe run. This is what I'm going to report on. This is going to be a pretty hefty report here, so I'm going to run that report and then just display that real quick. But up here at the top, we can choose Run Selected Actions. We'll give that a moment and it's going to open up the dialog box. It's going to ask us, hey, do you want to open up the Word doc that you just saved out? And we're just going to go ahead and hit OK. So we'll say yes. It's going to open up Word. Okay, and there you can see that is our report. It's exported out a ton of information about that uh, corridor, the baselines, all the codes and stuff. That's not a pretty report, but you get the point. Um, again, you can create as many as you want, customize as you want. So that's using the object sets to create a report. But what if we just want a quick report? So I'm going to come back here to the alignments tab. And I'm going to choose, let's come down here to Buckboard Lane. I'm going to right click and here's some options. So we've got quick report to file. We have quick report to AutoCAD table. 
and then we have a quick export to 2D DWG. So things are just a right click away. Same with the object sets. Right click away, all that same information here, export it out. So you could create a whole object set and export that set itself out to a DWG. Let's go back here, let's just do a, a quick report. So I'm gonna say quick report to file. Name, we're gonna leave it. Let's just change this to a PDF for the heck of it here. Custom layout style, we can do the same stuff we did before with what we want included in those reports. And then edit report style, you know, what we want included, um, how we want it to look as well in that report. I'm gonna leave them default for now, I'm just gonna hit okay. It's gonna ask me to save that PDF. Sure, we'll just save that. Yes, we wanna view it, that's why we created it. And then here you can see the output for my finished grade of Buckboard Lane. Okay, quick report. Maybe we, maybe we just wanna do a quick table. So again, I can, I'm just gonna select the whole thing, but I could select parts of it here. I'm just gonna right click. And in here, we have a structures list. So oh, we could create whatever table we wanted, but we'll just use this one. Quick report to AutoCAD table. I'll select that. What do we want in the table? Again, I think you get the point. You can edit and customize anything and everything. I'm gonna leave it all default. I'm gonna hit okay. This brings me back into Civil because I can now put this report or this table inside Civil 3D. And if I zoom in there, this is a table. I know you can come up to annotate, add tables, create a table, uh, but that's a quick table for your pipe networks, uh, whatever information you wanted to see in there. Okay, so as you saw, there's a ton of information. Um, point of Project Explorer is really just to explore your design, validate your design. So I know that's a lot to go over in the 30, 35 minutes we are allotted for this. Um, obviously 2020 AU is a quite a bit different uh, there will be multiple Q&A sessions. So if you go to the class page, it'll tell you when and what time I'll be available for follow-up Q&A sessions. So it's kind of a two-part thing. We've got our class, we've got our session here, and then we have Q&A sessions. So if you have a bunch of questions or something, you want to go over something else, you can always come back to one of the, I think there's going to be two of the Q&A sessions. So again, this session we could be here for four to eight hours and go over all aspects of Project Explore. Uh, but the point of what I wanted to do today was just really explore it. Um, open it up maybe for the first time, introduce you to it for the first time, and then just kind of poke and prod around and see what the capabilities are. Uh, the additional documentation. So in the class stuff, there is a PDF file that uh, it's... 45 pages long, but it's going to walk you through a lot of this stuff. There's step-by-step -step tutorials. There's four of them in there. Um, come with a data set. You can use your own data, um, but uh, if you do want to get some, a little bit more practice, you can grab this uh, PDF and run through some of those tutorials. So uh, again, if you like my class, share it. Uh, again, these are recorded all the time. They're going to be on a use site. Uh, so bookmark it, share it, recommend it. Uh, if you have any questions or anything else and you don't or you're not able to make it to the Q&A session, you can shoot me an email anytime. My email address is right there below. Uh, so as usual, I greatly appreciate everybody's time and thank you again and have a good day.